What is going on, New York Giants fans? D. Illa here. So episode two is concluded of Hard Knocks for the New York Giants. That was an outstanding episode. I thought the, the scenes in that were so much more raw and really put you in real time like as to when they were taking place there. I thought I thought it was so much better than the first episode. I thought some of those scenes in the, in the first one were kind of planned out, and it just it just didn't seem as authentic as this one did. But something I wanted to go over with from this episode, I don't feel like a lot of people are going to touch on this. Okay, if you're ask, if you're asking why I'm wearing a jacket, it was it felt like 109 degrees out where I live. We had the AC cranking in the house, so it's cold down here in the basement. So I'm wearing the starter jacket. So. One thing I feel like a lot of people aren't going to touch on, at least right now, considering there probably aren't too many videos out, there was a con conversation that Brandon Brown and Joe Shane were having in the box, and you know they were kind of talking about the wide receivers and their mentality as to how they react to the quarterback when things aren't exactly going the right way. And they, they started talking about Daniel Jones, and they said that he loves to be challenged by his offensive players. And when I saw that, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, I don't know exactly how they know this because when you think about all the wide receivers that Daniel Jones has played with, you know, Sterling Shepard, Isaiah Hodgins, Wondell Robinson, Darius Slayton, Jalen Hyatt, Richie James, Golden Tate, Kenny Galladay. Out of that list of players, the only two guys that you could really consider have really big personalities are Kenny Galladay and Golden Tate. And Kenny Galladay really didn't have a leg to stand on with this football team as far as like bitching at the quarterback goes. Now you can sit here and say, well, the passes were, weren't exactly on target or, you know, Kenny wasn't exactly getting open, which he wasn't. You know, Kenny didn't do really anything that we, we brought him here to do. Didn't help us out at all. And he was a complete non-factor. So he didn't really have a room to come out there and bitch at the quarterback. Even though the quarterback may have had some kind of effect on his play. But, you know, based on the way he was playing, man, he was pretty much shot by the time we got our hands on him. Which some people believe before he came to the team. Golden Tate. Golden Tate was an older wide receiver. He was a guy that was very productive in Seattle and Detroit. By the time we got it, got our hands on him, I felt like he was washed. I never really considered Golden Tate a New York Giant. I always considered him a a Seattle Seahawk or Detroit Lion, man. He just he, he was an older player that we got our hands on that we tried to squeeze some more production out of, you know, late on later on in his career. It just didn't work out. But those two guys are the only guys that I can really think of that would challenge Daniel Jones in that huddle when things aren't exactly going the way they'd like them to. So for Brandon Brown and Joe Shane to sit there and say, well, Daniel Jones likes that kind of conflict on the field, I just I don't know how they could say that because I don't feel like he's ever dealt with a personality like Malik Neighbors and a player like Malik Neighbors. Like when, when Malik gets open and he's not being fed the ball or he's not being fed early, like you heard him heard him say in that interview, like when he's not involved in the game plan, he kind of you know he gets kind of discouraged and then that it kind of affects him. This is a very competitive player. And, dude, Malik is going to make plays out there on that football field. Whether he's taking a five-yard slant for, you know, 20 to 25 yards or he's taking it to the house, he's going to make plays like that. He's not going to be like Kenny Galladay where he comes out here and he gives you absolutely nothing and then he can't, you know, really say anything because he's not producing out there on the field. He's going to make plays. So when Daniel Jones, when he's open, when, when, when Malik Neighbors is open at times and Jones isn't getting him the ball and he gets discouraged and he kind of starts chatting, towards Daniel Jones it's like I don't know exactly how Daniel Jones is going to handle that situation because I don't think he's ever been on the field with a player like that so again I don't know how Joe Shane Brandon Brown can actually you know sit down and say something like that with accuracy and, and really know it for a fact to play out that way so that was one of the things that I took from the episode that was the episode that was jam-packed with stuff I mean I love that episode from top to bottom all the way through up until the point they were at the, at the steakhouse eating you know, shrimp cocktail. I could care less about that. Whatever. But, and at the end, the conversation with Saquon Barkley. You could really tell just how fractured that relationship was between Joe Shane and, and Saquon Barkley. You know, the scene started off, Joe Shane was talk, talking to the agent. And the agent asked him, he was like, you know, when you're, when you're laying down at night and you're sitting alone by yourself, he's like, do you really want this guy on your football team? And Joe Shane basically just basically told him, like, you know, he still thinks he's a valuable player. He still believed he was the best player on the football team at the time and that he, he did want him back. 
And as you heard him say throughout the episode that they did offer him a contract last year, and he turned it down, and, you know, contract negotiations stalled. And obviously Saquon Barkley became very irritated during this time because you, you kept on hearing Joe Shane refer to the fact that Barkley was getting pissed off. You heard him say this like probably like two or three times throughout the episode. So things were not going well with that situation, you know, basically as, as everybody reported. And you could really hear it in that conversation, man. It wasn't cordial. It wasn't friendly. There was nothing. It was very short. And you could just hear that they were just both just – they were tired of what was going on with the contract talks. And it was like, okay, we're both on the line and we're not going to tell each other what we want to hear. So why are we continuing to talk? And that's that's basically the way I took it. So it, it, it's tough to watch, but I mean, that's that's it seems like the way it played out. But that's it. I appreciate y'all tuning in as always. Thank you for your time. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.